Hello everyone, my name is Mark Christian Buskagen, a third year BTL and ICT student. And class, welcome to today's lesson on the factors to be considered in organizing assessment activities. As you all know, the NC2 is a certification program that measures the competencies of individuals in their respective fields. To pass the assessment, one must be able to demonstrate the required skills knowledge and attitudes according to standard set by the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or TESDA. In this lesson, we will discuss the essential factors that need to be considered when organizing assessment activities for NC2. Understanding these factors will help us ensure that we can conduct fair and accurate assessments that meet the standards set by TESDA. Let's get started and learn more about the essential factors in organizing assessment activities for NC2. Okay class, do you have any idea what is assessment? Ms. Buko? Very good. How about you, Ms. Manlimos? All right, all of your answers are correct. Assessment, it is the process of collecting evidence and making judgment on whether competency has been achieved. Meaning class, assessment is when we collect evidence and decide whether we have learned the skills and knowledge we need to so we can demonstrate our competency. Did you know class, planning and assessment activity is a complex exercise? As illustrated in the diagram below, there is a wide range of factors that need to be considered. The first factor is competency standard. Competency standard is a nationally agreed document that outlines the minimum skills, knowledge, and attitudes required for competent performance in a particular field. It provides bench benchmarks for national, national evaluation and used to determine if someone has earned a qualification. The evidence guide, the unit of competency, provides critical information and the underpinning knowledge and skills resource implications, assessment method, and context of assessment. So from that definition, we can say that competency standard is a document that lists the minimum skills knowledge and attitudes needed to perform well in a job which helps assessors evaluate if someone has earned a qualification. Next is assessment guidelines. It's the information instructions given to the candidate and or the assessor regarding conditions under which the assessment should be conducted and recorded. So assessment guidelines are instructions given to the candidate and as source that explain the conditions in which the assessment will take place and how it should be recorded. As source have an important role to play in making sure that assessment processes are done properly. The need to follow the assessment guidelines to ensure that everyone has an equal chance, chance to show what they know and can do. First, assessment processes are fair to all candidates. This means that assessors must make sure that everyone has the same opportunity to demonstrate their skills and knowledge. No one should be at, the, at a disadvantage because of their background, gender, or other factors that are not related to the assessment. Second, assessment classes are implemented in a consistent manner. This means that assessors need to use the same approach every time they, assesses, they assess someone. This should follow the same procedures and use the same criteria to ensure that the assessment are reliable and valid. Third, assessment processes produce a high quality and consistent outcomes. This means that assessors need to make sure that the assessments are high quality and produce consistent results. This includes using reliable and valid assessment tools, ensuring that the assessments are marked accurately and providing clear feedback to the candidates. By following the assessor's guidelines, assessors can help ensure that the assessments are done fairly, consistently, and produce accurate and reliable results. 
results. The third factor is dimensions of competency must be taken into account when an, ass when an assessor is gathering evidence of a candidate's competency for a unit. An assessment should be designed to address this accordingly. From that definition, the mentions of competency refer to the different aspects or areas that make up a particular competency, which must be considered when designing an assessment to gather evidence of a candidate's competency for a unit. And now, class, I will be introducing to you, to all of you, the four types of dimensions of competency, which are the specific skills that a person needs to be competent in a particular, particular workplace. The first type is task skills, which involves being able to complete a specific task or set of tasks, such as entering a data into a computer. The second type is a task management skills, which involves being able to manage multiple tasks in order to complete a larger work activity, such as taking feedback in a product design and incorporating it into the final design. The third type is contingency management skills, which involves being able to respond to problems or unexpected situations that may arise during a work activity, such as dealing with difficult client or a breakdown in equipment. Finally, the fourth type is a job role environment skills, which involves being able to navigate the responsibilities and expectations of the work environment, such as working with others, interacting with clients and suppliers, and following company, company policies and procedures. The fourth factor is workplace policies often reinforce and clarify standards operating procedures in a workplace. Assessment should include activities that are very common in the workplace, just such as safety practices, filing up of pertinent forms and reports, etc. So it's very supportable or easy to understand that workplace policies and procedures refer to a set of guidelines and rules established by an organization to ensure consistency and compliance with laws and regulations and assessment of these policies should include common workplace activities such as safety practices and falling out forms and reports. The fifth factor is the evidence gathering tools are the specific questions or activities developed from the selected assessment methods to be used for the assessment. Evidence gathering tools entails that these are the specific tools or methods used by the assessors to collect evidence of a student's competency, such as questions, projects, or observations. The second to the last factor is assessment centers, or the locations which where assessments are conducted, and they must have the necessary resources and safe working conditions for the assessment to take place. The required resources are listed in the evidence guide of the relevant unit of competency and the assessors is responsible for assembling and testing them prior to the assessment. Obviously, assessment centers are where assessment take place and they need to have the right resources and base safe for the assessment to happen. The assessors is responsible for gathering and testing the necessary resources and the evidence guide for the relevant competency unit provides details in what resources are needed. And lastly is assessment candidate an individual seeking recognition of his or her competencies to acquire a certification. It means that assessment candidate is someone who is being evaluated to determine whether or not they possess the necessary skills and knowledge to be certified in a particular area. In conclusion, we have learned that organizing assessment activities for NC2 requires a thorough understanding of the essential factors involved. Thus, the factors include competency standard, assessment guidelines, dimensions of competency, workplace policies, and evidence gathering tools. By taking these factors into consideration, assessors can ensure that assessments are conducted fairly, consistently, and produce accur accurate and reliable results. As individuals aiming to pass the NC2 certification program, we should also strive to demonstrate the required skills knowledge, and attitudes according to the standards set by TESDA. Alright class, I hope you learned something today and that would be the end of our discussion today about the factors to be considered in organizing assessment activity and see you in our next class in which I will be discussing to all of you our second lesson which is all about purpose of assessment, orientation, documentation, and appointment.